everybody, this is Edwin the Magic Engineer. I know it's been a while since I've seen all you guys. I'm doing great, just been working, family stuff, uh, had some good and bad things happen and it's all fine. It was just like health related and it's all in the past now, don't worry about me. It's good to see all you guys again and thanks for coming back. So I haven't done an update for a while and I figured I might uh, just go ahead and kind of talk about where I'm at in terms of like where I see kind of markets going where I see like the card games kind of going, especially because I made a lot of predictions in the past. So I felt it like I owed it to you guys to kind of come full circle and come back and kind of say like, here's where I see everything after all these like craziness pieces of ha things happening in the last few years. So let me start off with like, let me just get like the markets out of the way because <clears throat> like the finance side um, is it's, I know it's very interesting. Uh, I actually right now, Finance wise, I'm actually fairly bullish at the moment. Um, I actually, I, I absolutely know that markets are basically kind of fake. They're bubbled, I understand. Uh, I do think that they're gonna continue going up because right now when you've got like Fed injected liquidity, you've got rates artificially being held back down or starting to cut, like come back down. I do think that's like a risk on environment. And I do think that, um, money that's been kind of sitting on the sidelines waiting for like a long long overdue crash might start like kind of coming back into the market um basically what i'm saying is i think it like all follows the fed and you know that's kind of like first of all an indication of a market that's not necessarily a real market but that's kind of where we're at and so like investment wise like I i'm not telling you what to do i'm telling you what i'm doing like i've started like pushing money back into the market based on the fact that they said they're gonna keep dropping rates for a bit. And I know that there's like layoffs and stuff happening and there's some bad stuff happening, but I think that's going to further encourage them to keep like lowering rates. So until I see a big reversal there, like financial market wise, like that's kind of where I'm looking. Now a big topic was Magic 30th, right? Magic 30th is something that like, when it came out, is like one of my last videos, uh, at least on my channel. And I spoke about it saying that I thought collector edition, like international collector edition and the original collector edition, like all printed in 1993 on the same plates as beta. I thought that those are going to go through a drop and then they would stabilize at some point and then there would be like massive opportunity to buy. And many of you who've been speaking with me, like since Magic 30 came out, you know that that is exactly what I did. Now I've got cards here, like in the front on a little table to show you, but I've also got, you know, I, I bought sealed packages of collector's edition. I bought a ton of loose ones. I have like, gosh, I have like an, an uh, like 80 dual lands overall, but 40 of my dual lands are like the collector's edition ones. So it's like a complete set of revised, complete set of collector's edition. I've got multiple power nine sets now. Gosh, I've probably got tons, like maybe like six or seven, like demonic tutors and a lot of like your basic things. Like, yeah, I definitely pushed in and like put my money where my mouth was. Um, I'm absolutely confident in it still because the, the advice that I gave back then that the reserve list is not broken with Magic 30th. And, like everyone's scared about printing and such, but it did not break the reserve list. And it's still in Wizards of the Coast's favor to not touch that because it could trigger such a large lawsuit and the amount of money they would gain is so small. It's just not worth it for them to do it. So I knew that back then and that's why I was saying that, but I knew it would also create a lot of fear. Now, what I didn't know was how low that CE market would go. I really didn't know. And I, I tried to be clear about that, that like, you know, there'll be opportunity. I can't tell you where the right buy price is. But I can tell you this, like it dropped lower than I thought it was gonna drop. So a lot of my purchases were like well below this lower point. But I do actually think right now that what we're seeing at the moment, I feel like it's basically hit like as low as it's gonna go through. And I think right now, a lot of these collectible card games, the ones that will be successful in the future, the ones that are not gonna collapse, they're in a consolidation phase. They're not in a crash. And I'm gonna back that up like very solidly with you guys. But first let me just hit on this Magic 30th like completely. So my viewpoint is that the Magic 30th, it did a lot of things that people weren't expecting. We expected way more of them to be released and the Wizards cut the print very short. So since Wizards cut the print very short, the number of Magic 30th out there is actually a very small amount. So they're even more rare than alpha as far as I know. There's very limited of them. 
but like they're not tournament legal and there's a big distaste a lot of players don't like it and something that a lot of people miss like i actually have these like arguments with people that are even like friends of mine they thought magic 30th was going to even going to come in and just crush ce and ie and i kept telling them like you guys the people that made collector's edition and international collector's edition raise back up in prices it is in fact the old school community of people that are like buying those old school cards and playing with them in old school events those are the people that are buying the ce and the ie and the majority of them do not like magic 30th so as far as i can tell that still rings true magic 30th is really like it's like a very tiny pool of collectors all selling back and forth to each other and the people who love ce and the original magic cards abu and revised and all these old school sets and reserve list they still love it now so I think based on the prices kind of like no longer kind of like coming down, they seem to be stabilizing. And I see posts now on Facebook that basically say like, hey, I'm looking to buy all these like certain cards. Like you're starting to see people looking for cards, not cards looking for buyers, right? That's a big inflection point, right? And you're starting to see some prices on things like hard, like stabilize and some of them are like starting to creep up. You're starting to see people go back into the reserve list. So I feel like we've hit a bottom right now <clears throat> let me return to that topic i was talking about this being a consolidation phase and not a crash okay so what do you see in a crash of like any market what you generally see is an, enor an enormous amount of supply because everyone's trying to get out right huge supply hits the market prices keep falling you got way more sellers than buyers the supply keeps increasing right and that bottom keeps falling and you know, people can always play the kind of game, you know, the whole catching the falling knife scenario, like where's the right price, price, price to grab it in case it goes back up. But in a crash, you can't really see the bottom. You could just see a lot of momentum building up on the selling. The fear gets massive. There was a lot of those pieces in this recent like sell off with all these high end cards. But here's the difference. This entire time, what I have not seen is I have not seen a massive supply of all these old original print cards. What I have seen is like there's some that hit the market, but then they actually do in fact sell. And their price may drop a little bit, but then they do in fact sell. What you've seen is like there is buyers coming in to meet the sellers, but the buyers are a little reserved and so the price is drifting down. Now let's talk about what a consolidation phase means. Consolidation phase is basically where the people that have extra liquidity, they have a lot of like funds and they still have a bullish outlook on the cards. They're either going to hold on to their cards or they're going to acquire more of those cards. Those are the stronger hands, right? So the stronger hands consolidate all of the assets all to themselves and the weaker hands are the ones that sell off. And so what it seems like to me is the weak hands in this case are either people that couldn't hold on to the cards financially or they just basically lost faith in the cards, which uh, again, like I've been telling you, like I don't think is very valid because the reserve list wasn't in fact broken. People still love the cards. The demand is still there. There was just a scare that was put out in the market with this whole Magic 30th. So I told people that at the beginning, I continued buying through the whole thing and I've never seen the supply get massive. I've always seen sellers come in and to meet buyers, but the price just kind of kept drifting down for quite a while. And now what you're starting to see again is you're starting to see people like going into an area and be like, there's no cards. Like try it yourself. Like go to like Card Kingdom, go to like uh, ABU Games, go to TCG Player. Like you really don't see very many like of these old school reserve lists, like original print cards. There's really not a lot of them in there. And the ones that do sell seem to sell kind of more like person to person interaction or like over Facebook, certain groups that are like you have to be invited to get into. So you do see transactions happening, but there's not a ton of supply out there. In fact, a, coup, a few whales could kind of just come in and just whoop, scoop it all up and like there it all goes, right? The available supply. So it is looking to me like it has been a consolidation phase. It looks to me like it is actually turning. I've been buying the entire time. If I can, I will keep buying. And that's kind of like how I see like at least the magic market. Some others are kind of hitting their own things. Uh, I'll switch over to Flesh and Blood for a second. So I still have all my Flesh and Blood cards. You know, got all my, I don't know if you can see it. Maybe I'll even hold it a little bit closer for you guys. I don't know if there's reflections and such. 
but I've got all of my flesh and blood cards here. Um, I'm not selling my play cards for flesh and blood. I really like the game. I enjoy the game. I'm definitely not going to dump all my play cards for flesh and blood, but the prices have in fact come down. Now, if you look around, you can easily see the sealed box prices, the singles, they're just kind of getting destroyed. There's a lot of faith that's being lost in the game. So it's great for the players. So for everyone that wants to get in and play the game, like literally like green light, now's your chance. Go grab those cards. They're crazy cheap. You can go get Fabled for like $28 from some of the newer sets and such. And it's just, it's crazy, right? So you can definitely get cheap cards to play a very good TCG, which is Flesh and Blood right now. So for that perspective, it's fantastic. For the money side of Flesh and Blood, I'm kind of surprised to see how much it's like falling off. Now, I've bought a decent amount. I wasn't planning on selling them anyways. So it doesn't really like impact me, but... There are some extras that I bought and I kept sealed in some cases, not, not a lot. I mean, but I do have like some sealed cases of like some sets. And so of course, like those, the value in those is like tanked like way down and that's unfortunate. But I didn't put a like ton into that because my goals are mostly like on the play side. So it does look like that is probably gonna continue. I don't see any signs of that changing in the future, but it is an absolute green light for people that have been wanting to try flesh and blood to just come in. I mean, you can, for a few hundred dollars, like you can get a wide array of like cards and build like several different decks. So it's a great time to actually enter that game. Now, um, in terms of like magic, um, I literally, like I was like saying, I've, I've sold nothing. I still have all my old school cards, right? All, all my, all everything's like there and it's all like in binders. It's all ready to go. And I still actually have been playing events recently. Uh, these are my play decks. I go, there's a group called the Florida Fireballs. And we meet up like once a month out here, like in the Orlando area, like a little bit north of Orlando. And we just kind of do casual old school games. And uh, we allow proxies to show up. You know, of course it's best to own the cards, but if you can't, you know, grab your proxies and come on in. So I've always got my decks ready to go, and I always show up, or not always, as many as I can, show up to these events and then just play, right? So that's what I've been doing, like, over, like, the last few years. I've been doing an awful lot of playing of the game, and, like, I just haven't been doing a lot of videos and such. Now, um, in terms of, like, you know, the other YouTube connections, yeah, I still meet up with Rudy and Dan. We talk, like, I don't know, like, many, several times a week. I mean, it's like, none of that has basically changed, but we still talk all the time. And so we're in very similar kinds of mindsets and how we see all this stuff. But I just kind of want to give you guys, like, an update. Like, this is where I'm basically at. Like, I think that stock market, those kinds of things, I'm, I think it's risk on for a little bit for the assets that you can, like, sell easily. But I'm watching, like, what central banks and governments are doing, like, very closely. If I see central banks pull back, and they start rate like inflation starts kicking up and they start raising those rates again. I'm gonna pull money out, go to cash, or maybe just move to like some kind of investment like SPACs or something like that that I can like just move it in risk free, make like five percent. You know, we'll see something like that. But that's kind of where I'm at with like market with like magic. I literally think now is a time to buy because I see that it's gone down for a while. It seems to be flattening out, and people are starting to come back into that market. So it kind of seems to me like your last chance to basically get in before it starts taking off again. Now here's where I, th I see things going. The last bit, then I'll like, this is probably enough for now, so I'll end the video there. Kind of global macroeconomic wise, what I see happening, nothing has really changed so much in the world. All the currencies all around the world are still really untethered from anything tangible. We're still headed towards inflation. Every time there's a chance for a country to go into a natural long or deflationary cycle to allow all these bubbles to deflate, the, gover the government and the banks, they never allow this stuff to happen, right? They, they seem to be like, hell no, we're not going to let this happen. And so it seems to be the name of the game, as far as I can tell, is they either want to keep everything like flat or they want it to start going back up and they're willing to print money, artificially hold rates ramp down to do that kind of thing. So in my eyes... I absolutely believe we have more inflationary times coming. I can't give you dates on when that is. That is what I think is going to happen. So I will definitely tell you that my own investment profile is moving much more towards things rather than just like cash. You're like something that I think I look at and I think that's a tangible asset that will survive inflation well. Those are things I'm paying attention to, right? 
but I'm not all eggs in one basket. Like I still have stocks. I still have bonds. I still have real estate. I still have like other assets, but I'm definitely paying attention to inflation proof, very rare collectible tangible assets. Cause I do think that we st will start to hit inflation again because we're going to start to hit hard times. People are going to start to complain. There could be bankruptcies with like all, every, the rates are still fairly high right now, right? Businesses are still struggling and such. So that could cause politicians and central banks to try to make take action. I think that that could cause like a little bit of dip in economy and then like a reinflation on the backs of like either money printing or drop rates or something like that. And then I think we're off to inflation city. And the thing is like when you want to go get those assets, you might find a time that like you want to go get them, but they're not available to get. So you kind of have to start to kind of take positions in them. So that's my outlook. I'm not suggesting that you all go do that. That is exactly what I'm doing and that's how I basically see it. So uh, yeah, that that's the quick update. I wanna hear what you guys think. I wanna hear your comments down below. Um, are you glad to see uh, that I'm back online? Do you wanna hear more of the perspective? And there's other videos I'd like to make and some other topics I'd like to touch on. So, you know, we'll see how things go and we'll probably get to those too. So thanks for coming everybody. You have a great day. Bye-bye.